host of the Fresh Connect Food Hub program. So we do have a, a couple of, of great guests with us today just to help us celebrate the, the uh, open house and farmer school month. And so uh, speaking after me will be Julie Byron, and she is with the uh, uh, statewide, the director of statewide health improvement initiatives. So we're glad to have Julie here with us with the Department of Health. And then Brent Hales, who is the uh, senior associate dean at the University of Minnesota there. Extension. So glad to have a couple of guests. I'll introduce a couple more here as I make just a couple of comments. Uh, we'd like to we'd like to certainly thank the University of Minnesota Extension uh, for their issue area grant program that helps make this possible. So uh, what what does that mean? Multi a lot of education. So multiple educational opportunities, not only for our food service folks that work in schools, but certainly for our growers as well. So they're kind of the link between our growers and, uh, and, and the food service directors, whether they're in schools or cities or counties or nonprofits or nursing homes that we might deliver that food to. Uh, they have helped us to foster a food system, uh, lesson plans for teachers. So we are now getting to that teacher level and bringing this down and bringing this good work and uh, news to, to our school district. So they have really helped with, with system lesson plans and that's from, I would say K-12, but probably preschool to, to college-aged uh, college kids. And then, you know, really they probably supported learning in the rapidly growing world of food hubs. So food hubs, as you know, whether you live in, in Minneapolis or St. Paul, uh, or, or out here in, in the rural areas, food hubs are certainly growing and we see a lot of uh, potential and new growth there as well. So we'd like to thank Noelle specifically from uh, the U of M Extension, where she go? There she is. And Noelle, Noelle Harden for her work, her leadership, partnership, and probably most importantly for us, flexibility. So thank you <laughs> for that as well. And, uh, and really, we wouldn't be here without the Partnership for Health. Uh, that really, the, the work that we've done, and that's how we got our start, the Partnership for Health uh, and SHIP, in particular, Statewide Health Improvement Program, uh, was able to, to connect uh, the work that we traditionally did with schools and food service directors uh, with these initiatives. So we're very, uh, very thankful for those groups. We, we kind of have a 30 year history here, it's our 30 year anniversary at Lakes Country, uh, of working with our schools. And we've been working with our schools and food service directors for many, many years. And they've asked us for many, many years, how do we get more fresh food and produce on our table. So this is our, our first stab at this. We're, we're, we're not calling ourselves a pilot anymore. I think we've reached the successful ranks that we're not a pirate. But it was really our chance to, uh, to really get local foods into, uh, into our school districts and in turn other members. At the same time, we were doing work with SHIP, the Statewide Health Improvement Program, and Jason's here. He's been pretty active in that. There he is. Jason is here, and we've been doing work with SHIP uh, that talk about making, uh, getting food system access to our communities. And so the, the two seem to work very much hand in hand, and we were able to, to pull off the Fresh Connect food up. So really, really our work started with a question. Probably started with a question more than anything, is how can we get local, nutrient-rich, uh, nutrient-dense foods into our schools on a daily basis? And, and we talked often here about how do we help the next generation of kids and communities become more healthy. So if we were going to help with chronic health issues in our schools, in our nation, and in, in particular here in our region and, and local, why not start with teaching kids about healthy food, local growers, and, uh, and really long-lasting communities from an early age. So it, it started with a question. And ultimately, we hope that we're able to not only be a springboard for our school districts and our members to serve healthy foods, but really for our communities to serve healthy foods. So we, we hope that this work takes off, expands far beyond what we can handle here, and uh, really the, the, the natural and locally grown food, uh, we hope that that continues uh, in the cafeterias, schools, and markets as well. So um, again, I, I think our most important mission here at Lakes Country Service Cooperative has always been to, to be educational. And you know, so most importantly, we want our kids to learn where, where food comes from, uh, how it is grown, and that future generations learn to appreciate and enjoy healthy local fruits and vegetables. So with that, I am going to turn it over to uh, Julie Myrie, who's got a few comments. And she said the speech wasn't more than 45 minutes. <laughs> Thank you very much for our long and share with you today, share the celebration of what you've been able to accomplish here in Curtis Falls with the Fresh Connect Food Hub. So, um, and just to 
just share the celebration that partners are here celebrating and, and uh, to experience it. So as um, as I said, I, was, I am the I lead the statewide health improvement program, the shift program across the state, and efforts like this here in Curtis Falls are great examples of what SHIP is all about. I'd like to say that SHIP is state supported. It has um, state funding, so we, we support it. We also support through technical assistance and evaluation things at the Minnesota Department of Health, but it truly is locally driven. So these efforts are really exciting. It's exciting for me to see what you all are doing here locally. Um, and I'm just excited that SHIP has been at the table to um, at the table. To be able to support the fresh community. So, healthy communities create opportunities for all of us to live longer and healthier lives. And thanks to SHIP, healthy communities is um, providing opportunities for increased access to healthy foods and, and active living and tobacco free living. And we know that treating chronic diseases is expensive and um, we need to address in prevention. And SHIP does exactly that. It, it invests in prevention, preventing those chronic diseases. Making progress, thanks to the work of this community and, and this, uh, with this, the Food Hub as well as the other efforts that are going on here and across the state. Um, the WPC rates have declined in the state and the state's overall smoking rates are local and national average. Um, so we really are making some progress, but we have a ways to go. So we need to keep doing work like this and we also need to think about those who are disproportionately um, affected by so ship strategies are implemented across the state in all 87 counties. It's been incredible. Uh, it's really a movement throughout the whole state. Um, they look similar and, and some of the strategies are similar, but how they're implemented are, are unique and it's based on that local perspective and local needs. So 87 counties and 10 tribes, 10 of the tribes as well. It's uh, ship strategies are So when we make healthy choices easier and available, like what you're doing here in the food hub, we support better health for all. And SHIP is about making those healthy choices easier and making it possible. SHIP strategies are led by the community. It sounds like this effort was started, but uh, was led by a very committed local team who saw the need for increasing access, started with that question, um, to increase access to local healthy foods and leverage funding to be able to make it come to a reality. That's just exactly what we are excited about what SHIP can provide, it is bringing people together, identifying needs, and then looking at other sources. SHIP doesn't pay for stuff, but they can pay for the planning and it's the staff time at the local health department and look at partnership with health to be able to look at ways to leverage that funding and bring partners in and to bring that. Um, I'm excited to hear you're looking at expanding the coverage um, to other facilities and impacting them. Um, and really at the core, good nutrition. I'm a nurse by background. Good nutrition plays a key role in keeping everyone healthy, keeping us active, and, and reducing the impact of chronic disease. And this, it sounds like this food, food hub has been primarily um, focused on kids to begin with. What a great place to start, not only impacting their health, but um, exposing them to the um, fruits and vegetables and increasing their, changing their behavior and taste that will um, will impact long and throughout their lives. So what's exciting about the Food Hub also is not only the health aspects, and I definitely that's one of my key points, but it's also linked economically. So it's a provides an opportunity for employment and has an economic impact, which ultimately helps health status, uh, health status of people as well. But this Food Hub is more than, than just food. It's really you are community building. You are coming together through a diverse partnership People that are working together that haven't traditionally worked together. Public health professionals working with farmers, but sometimes they're the same. <laughs> but working with farmers, working with educational professionals, healthcare providers, um, university provider, or university staff, economic development folks, um, service cooperatives, unique partnerships that hadn't necessarily traditionally been, been um, have occurred. And collectively working together to address a need and to um, to create change in your community. And that capacity helps you help create this, but it also prepares you and increases your capacity to address other 
information is that your community is up facing. So you're really, throughout this process, really building your collective capacity. It also is an opportunity, really, I, I see the food charter over there, the uh, Minnesota Food Charter gives great examples. It was another collective, um, a collective group that came across the state and identified 99 strategies that would increase access to healthy um, foods. And so you are uh, using several strategies or writing a great So there's so, in closing, there's so many, oh, see, I show you. So um, in closing, there's so many examples uh, across the state similar to the Fresh Connect Food Hub. And where ship grantees and local partners are doing, are improving their food system, increasing opportunities for growers, and eliminating barriers, and improving access to nutritional and affordable food. So you are a part of a movement across the state doing this work. And so uh, I think um, your partnership for health folks see that. Um, more often than I think you and the partners in the community see it, but just remember that you are a part of an incredible network and, um, and a movement that's really going to change our state. So congratulations on your success here. It's really fun to see this. I see pictures, but it's fun to be here. And uh, hopefully to get to know a few of you. So thanks for all your work. Uh, on behalf of Dean Durg and Beth Durg, and I, I bring you uh, uh, greetings from, from St. Paul. Um, she is unable to be here today, but uh, sends her, her regards, and, and I'm, I'm not only grateful to represent her uh, on behalf of Extension, but also on behalf of our issue areas and, and Extension's leadership um, may or may not know this, but Extension truly is a statewide program, it's actually a national program, and uh, but in Minnesota, we are, Extension is essentially the front door to the university in Minnesota's counties. Greater Minnesota, in particular. Uh, I do want to recognize the the uh, efforts and, and the contribution of, of our associate dean Karen Shire, who heads up the Center for Family Development. Um, that's Noel's boss, and so this wouldn't have happened as as far as our participation without her uh, leadership in, in that effort. Um, so you heard about a little bit about issue areas, and we have three main issue areas that we provide some seed funding to. Uh, one of those is the food systems issue area, which is uh, which is the reason uh, why this is is uh, what, why we were here uh, from Extension's perspective. We also do uh, a clean energy and a uh, promoting youth educational success issue areas, and we provide seed grants or small mini grants up to $50,000 over the course of two years for extension to get out and create partnerships and, and that's what Noel and, and Ryan Pesh also with extension uh, have really pushed and, and driven a, a lot of this work and, and so uh, in 2014 I took over those issue areas and this was one of the grants that got funded and we're pleased to have another round of funding uh, to support this work uh, going forward from 2016 to 2018. And so our commitment, not only to food hubs and the research around food hubs, but the Fresh Connect Food Hub and, and to this region remains constant. And we're pleased about that, um, but we're also pleased to have the partnerships. And, and really, a food hub doesn't exist without you all, without all of us being working collaboratively to address critical needs and to uh, promote opportunity building. Uh, I work with, uh, on a very personal level, with the Hmong American Farmers Association, another, another food hub that is springing up, and uh, uh, have uh, farmers, Hmong farmers actually growing on my land, and it's been a, a great blessing to me and my family, and, and so we support food hubs on a very personal level, uh, but even just, uh, as Julie said, uh, this is a movement. Six months ago, or less than six months ago, I was a little false celebrating the opening of, of Food Hub. And so I hope you see yourselves as part of a much larger whole and something that is and is, uh, has support and is gaining more and more support. So uh, from extension perspective, we, we celebrate your successes and look forward to working with you to make sure that we only build from here. Uh, I also want to thank, uh, well, fantastic food. Uh, and, and thank you for for, uh, for using what is seasonally available too. So that was that was uh, very enlightening. Uh, but what a great day! And, and uh, Ben Anderson, our regional director, is actually over the, the food food systems uh, 
uh, issue Eric that he's here with us today. Uh, but if, if, uh, if I could just get our extension folks to, to raise their hands. And so uh, if you have questions about extension, please talk with one of us because we come from it, we believe it, we not only drink the Kool-Aid and swim it. And so uh, we're happy to chat with you. Um, we have a variety of programs uh, from our Ag Food and Natural Resources uh, folks, our Center for Youth Development, Center for Family Development, our uh, Center for Community Vitality, and our Regional Sustainable Development Partnerships. And so we want you to know that these resources are available, and uh, that's why we're here. So thank you very much, and again, congratulations. This is wonderful. Thank you for having us here today. Community. Um, we at Sweet Savory Kitchen, I, I, I think one of the things that is a little bit different about us is we actually uh, bend at our local farmer's market and we are very, um, very uh, much into using that food, using those uh, vendors. We know the growers that we buy from um, and that is, is something that we have always we have always made a part of our of our food. Um, we we do. It is challenging here in Minnesota sometimes to be able to find the things that I'm a person I'm a professional chef, and and it is sometimes a little tough to, to find all the things that you want to use. And um, it, it has been. Uh, we we've, we've been gone from the community a couple years. We're back. Um, beginning uh, in May of this year, and we're just so glad to be able to um, participate in this kind of event, and with all of the local growers, and uh, some of the schools, we've done some uh, classes, and some of the facts classes, and I kind of thing, trying to teach kids uh, that food doesn't always have to come from walks. And one of our, our things that we do is a little, sets us apart uh, as a caterer is we, everything with us is homemade. We don't use mixes or boxes anything and, and uh, tends to take a little bit more time and a little bit more expensive than most in town but um, it is important to us to use food that looks like food and hasn't been made into something else and it, it also is something that uh, we most of the time know the people who grew it, produced it, whatever. And that's very important so we're really glad to Alright, so uh, my name is Bjorn Solberg, um, I'm with Utopian Farms and uh, also Hughes Gardens as well. Uh, Utopian Farms is a small meat operation that was started on my family farm just five miles south of Fargo raising uh, lamb and chicken, hopefully other products, and then also we, uh, with Hughes Gardens, uh, sell uh, organic um, produce such as uh, potatoes, uh, squash and other uh, vegetables. Um, we really like and are excited to work with Fresh Connector in the area because it supplies uh, the community with uh, not only financial uh, good economics but also with our school system which is what this focus is on and educating our students about the importance of healthy living and uh, making sure that what you put into your body is, uh, is healthy and important and nutritious and also fresh uh, because most of this food here is coming directly from the field um, to the warehouse and it is being distributed um, and so really it's coming from um, the hands that made it to the people that have it in a, in a, a, a very fresh, good amount of time. So uh, Fresh Connect, we're very uh, uh, proud to work with and I uh, hope that it continues to grow. All right. Uh, my name is Ben Anderson. I work for University of Minnesota Extension based in Moorhead. This is one of the counties that I work in and my, uh, my service area or region covers the same as the, the Lakes Country uh, food co-op uh, or service co-op. So we've seen great benefits from this food hub with just getting fresh product out to different institutions, schools, hospitals, uh, and so on, and they're not getting that anywhere else. So 
What's been great about this uh, system here, this setup, is that they've been able to facilitate that and provide it. There's nobody else that's going to be able to do it. It's been great for us within Extension to assist with that in our education, um, the financial uh, support that we can provide through our food systems, uh, issue area grants, uh, other kind of training and, and work that we do and, and resources that we provide as well. Hi, my name is Allison Heinzler. I'm with the Minnesota Department of Health and I'm the Community Specialist for Northwest Minnesota. Food hubs like this are so important because they help the economy with working with the farmers and growers. They make community connections between schools and healthcare systems and all of the participants of this food hub with the farmers and growers. And they expose all the kids in this school and everyone in the community to all these healthy foods and they increase access to healthy foods and fresh produce in these communities. Another good reason for these food hubs or another great thing about them is that um, we have all these partnerships that are created now and they spawn to other partnerships in the community and we've seen that especially in the communities surrounding that they just lead to other great partnerships with road work and physical activity work and other community initiatives. So um, it's just a great opportunity for everyone. <laughs> Hi, my name is Mark Bone from Bluebird Gardens and, and I'm excited about raising local food for Fresh Connect just because our health is what matters and the more local we can have our food, the more it arrives nutritional with nutritional density to the place where it's eaten. Hi, I'm Karen Shire and I work at the University of Minnesota Extension and I'm here today in Fergus Falls to look at their new food hub. I can't tell you how excited I am to see about what they're doing here in order to make healthy local foods available to schools. We know that we have a lot of local growers that given the opportunity to source their foods, they would love to have them in the schools. And I'm really gr happy to see that this is a way for them to get their food in. Right now there's lots of apples here, but I'm guessing that there are other times of year when there are other healthy foods that they can have. Thank you. Hi, I'm Nick Weens. Um, I'm a representative with both Hughes Gardens and Utopian Farms. And uh, I just think the food, uh, Fresh Food Connect is very important, um, not only to provide local food to the community, but also to provide local growers with an, with an outlet for, uh, for their produce. Uh, so local food is incredibly important uh, because it's getting, it's getting kids exposed to local food economies and allowing them to taste what real food tastes like. If you try a carrot from a grocery store versus a carrot that comes from our local soil grown by local people, there's a complete difference. And so kids don't, they don't get exposed to that typically. So things like the Food Hub, it's bringing, it, bringing real local nutritious food into schools where kids are able to try it. And on top of which, it's also supporting our growers. I personally am actually a grower and so it's it's so exciting for me to get to see um, kids and families exposed to this food that's grown by our own neighbors. So um, yeah, it's incredibly important and I'm so excited to be a part of it here in Fergus Falls. Well, I'm, I'm Ken Pasternak with Minnesota Farmers Union and we agree with uh, the Food Hub uh, idea and the Fresh Food Farm to Table program. Uh, we have a cooks program at the State Fair where we bring in uh, uh, chefs from the region working with local farmers bringing your food in and they make uh, table fresh food right there introducing the farmers and uh, the chefs and uh, this program here is great uh, we really support uh, a, a program like this uh, in the communities uh, fresh food is what we're all about as farmers so the question is why is uh, local food important in Minnesota when we consider both the market as well as the opportunity for people to have fresh, healthy local produce, local is everything. Having the ability to provide both economy, uh, the, the economy of, of the local market uh, to support producers, but also to provide people with access to healthy foods um, just completes the full circle of nutrition help people understand what food should taste like. And that's why I support Minnesota, and that's why I support uh, local food in Minnesota. Hi, I'm Jan Workoff from Sweet and Savory Kitchen, and I'm here to talk about local food today. 
Um, one of the things that we do with our business is a lot of local food. We uh, know a lot of the producers that we buy from, and we uh, always try to um, work with our grower friends and make sure that we're featuring their food in our dishes that we make for our catering gigs. And one of the things that I think is really important about local food is that you're not transporting food thousands of miles. You can, you can um, pick it when it's ripe, you can eat it when it's uh, fresh off the vine, and it makes a huge difference in the way that things taste. And that uh, is one of the things that we incorporated into the foods that we do in our business. And it is uh, something that we uh, actually live by. So um, thanks for the opportunity and um, eat local food.